Sandy, how you doing, bud? No what's, bad. What's your name, man? Sandy. Sandy, I'm Dale. Sandy. How you doing, Dale? Well, just some quite questions, Sandy. Uh -huh. Can I ask you, do you do you trust the government? No, the you current don't. one. Aye. Uh, the, the the British one. Yeah. Would you trust any governments? Um, I trust the Scottish government more than I trust the British or American ones. I trust the Canadian government more than I trust. But you know, I mean. Aye. So. How, how do you discern? I mean, is there, is there anything, is there things that you do trust that come from the government? Uh, from which government? <laughs> from, say, the British government. The British government? Uh, uh, no, no, because there's been far too many changes in the past ten years. Yeah. I can't see, well, see when, see when Labour got in in 96 and they started a Northern Ireland peace process, they gave Scotland a devolution referendum, and they arrested General Pinochet, and you just thought, good, everything's looking good. Yeah. Because, you know, things, and, and then they screwed it up by getting a business model for government, and then kind of laid the ground for the Tories to then come along and ex exploit what had been. Yeah. It's so just you, getting worse and worse, I don't believe. So, so you know in government there's a propensity for them maybe tell lies and uh -huh. manipulate things. Uh, what about uh, the American government? What about them? Uh, the two? Trust them. The current one? No. No. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. No, I, I, and, and it's a different thing. The, um, I, this, this government, I don't trust their uh, um, motivation. And the American government, I don't trust their competence. Yeah. It's, it's quite terrifying. It's quite terrifying, really. I know. Can I, can I ask you, are you, are you, would you say you were a religious guy or are you more kind of scientific minded? I'm, I'm more philosophical minded. Right. I'm, so. more, of a, I'm more kind of in between. I, it's the. I find religion has questions that are already answered. Science is always, is always asking questions, get an answer, ask another question, get an answer. Well, that's a Philo great. Philosophy, um, you, you can never answer any of the questions. Yeah. And so what you find out along the way, while you're looking for an answer that you're not going to get, I find really, really valuable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so for me, this is this is the whole crux of what I'm, I'm up to. You know, I, I love science and I'm into um, direct realism. Uh -huh. For me, the core of science should always be based on empirical facts. So, you know. uh -huh. well, that's that me, me as well because that's what science does. That's because I think that's what science is. It's an agreement. We agree what reality is. That doesn't mean it's reality. Yeah. That's just what we as human beings, because we invented the we human beings invented the concept of science. Yeah. Science is just an apparatus for understanding things. Yeah. The same as uh, religion and yeah. the same as philosophy are all apparatuses yeah. for understanding exactly. things. Exactly. So, so science is is an apparatus for understanding things, and we agree what reality is, and it's probably the best one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's the, it's the well, best one to choose, it's well, the best one to defer to. Aye, because if I say to you, you know, there is an objective truth, there is an objective reality, would you agree with that? An objective reality? Well, no as a philosopher, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I was to drop that table on your head, it would crush it would, your skull. It would, it would hurt, right. yeah. So that's, yeah, that's objectively but that's just true. My, that's, yeah, but that's my perception of what pain is. I don't yeah. know what other benefits there are to that pain. Yeah. Because science continually discovers new things. See, all the science for a thousand years ago, forget it. So what's going to happen a thousand years from now? Maybe dropping this table in my head will hurt, but it will also give me a bigger cock. <laughs> you know, who knows what we'll discover. Is that a wishful thing? And, and, things like, and you can't argue, and that's why you can't argue, you know, when scientists say to religious people, where's your proof and all that? Well, faith doesn't need proof. Faith doesn't require proof. Yeah. You can't argue... Faith, I find it fascinating that people of faith and people of science argue with each other yeah. using... It's like you're throwing a tennis ball at my cricket bat. You yeah. know, we are, you're having completely different arguments. Science... And I don't I don't understand creationism because you've got you've already got your faith, so you don't need proof. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, and with science, it's like, well, you don't need faith, but actually you do. Because I, I, I just need to believe what Isaac Newton says. Yeah. Because well, well, I'm not a student of physics, I just have to defer well, to excellent. someone. Exactly, and that's that's exactly my point. So when it comes to t these types of things like Isaac Newton and, and these these types of um, thought processes, a lot of the stuff would depend on, we take on hearsay, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, just as you were saying there, and, and you know, for me, I base things on direct realism, what I can directly experience for myself. Uh -huh. So here's the thing that I'm getting to, I'm going to get at a point. If I was to say to you that there's a serious doubt in regards to the Earth being a ball flying uh -huh. about the vacuum of space, what would you think of that? Uh, I would think it's far too late for that argument. You would think it was far too late far for too that? Far too late for that argument, because there has been so many... 
um, investigations <laughs> for hundreds and hundreds of years. I would, I would, I would defer to. Well, what if I say to you, there's a huge movement happening. There are people waking up all over the world from all walks of life, from academia to the common man, who uh -huh. are really doubting what they've gave us. I mean, are you aware that there is no actual real video or actual photographs from space? Uh, I would. Uh, is that a fact? Well, you know, I've searched long and hard. If you go to Google Images right now, you will find maybe two images that they claim uh -huh. are real images of the ball from from space. So it's just claimed that the. Well, that's a, you know, it's a private institution. Well, as a student of philosophy, I would um, I would say everything's in, you can doubt anything, you can doubt everything. I can doubt that you're sitting there. Yeah. I can doubt everything. So what you have to do is show deference. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Earth is a ball. Because so I defer to the things that I've learned so far. So you would say it was based on hearsay, you've never actually experienced the Earth as a ball no, with your own eyes? No, because I can't, it's impossible to do that. Yeah. Even so, if you're taking a photograph of space, you, you, well, you would, I suppose they've got cameras that you can zoom right around now. But, um, no, I def, it, when it comes to science, I, def, I defer to people who I think know what they're talking about within science. Do you think that's dangerous though? No. No, do you not think it's better to base no, things think on your direct experience? I think, I think it's, no. No, because if, if I drew the number six right here, you would see a number nine. Yeah. Now, I know it's a six because my intention was to draw a six. But you would look and you would see a nine, and until I explain to you that that's a six, you're going to go, well, I see a nine, mate. But I drew it with the intention of drawing a six. Yeah. You're still, your direct experience is a nine, so you wouldn't believe that that was a six. Yeah. Even though I'm telling you that's what I drew. So that's why your own direct experience can often let you down. Yeah. Yeah, until you analyse and you come to understand it and have until that Until you look at it from my perspective, yeah, exactly. then you can go, oh, all right, well, the guy told me he intended to draw a six. Yeah. So, so it is a six, even though you're looking at it from a nine position. So, if I was to say to you, what shape's the horizon? I couldn't tell you that. I'm not studied enough. But when you look at... I would have to guess. When you look out at the horizon, what would you see? So what you're saying, what is my perspective yeah. from where I'm standing? Yeah. My perspective from where I'm standing, the horizon... Right, I assume you're talking across a seascape. Yeah. Right, um, well, you would say it's flat. Okay. Right. So if I was to From then, my perspective. So if I was to then say to you, if I went to natural physics um, and fluid mechanics, and I was to say to you that for me, you know, if I established that my most accurate measuring tool and the most accurate measuring tool known to man for establishing a level is mm. water, would you agree with that? I don't know. I don't know if I could agree with that or no. I would well, again. I would have to defer to somebody because I've no studied. Have you ever have you ever seen convex bodies of water? No. If I say to you that water has formless, water can take the shape of its container, and the surface will always be horizontal. Would you say mm. that's your everyday experience of water on Earth? I wouldn't say it's my everyday experience of water on Earth. I would just say it's <coughs> what I guess. Yeah. From what I can see and the boats I've been on and yeah. and experiments I did in school well, twenty you know, odd you, years you, ago. You, you, you get up in the morning, you make a cup of tea, you have a, a oh, wash, right. I see you what have you a mean. bath. Oh, any water, not just bodies of water, like just the loch. Any water. Well, you, you know, you can get surface yeah, you don't, tension. You don't you get, get water uh, like yeah, or mounded like up. What water's about. not got the, the ability to support itself to, to display shapes upon its surface. Uh -huh. So if we go into any body of water and we submerge a shape under that body of water, uh -huh. you will never see a silhouette of that on the top of the, the, the water. Yeah. Because it's formless, it can't take uh -huh. the shape of the underside. Yeah, the stuff that's containing it's got a form though. Of course it has. So that's that's. So it's I'm gravity pulls the water down. It's within the shape, and it'll always sit because it's liquid. Now, well, you know, gravity is another one of these things that are theories that have never been defined or proven. You know. Uh -huh. Well, it's that's fact. that's. I've actually said that to my say pals once when when I was a, when I was a teenager and in my twenties, I used to argue with a lot of religious people who told me I had a good Christian attitude. Yeah. Because uh, um, I like I like Christian philosophy and I like Jesus. What has been written about Jesus Christ? I just don't believe in divinity. Right. The divinity doesn't make any sense to me, so I'm not having it. Yeah. But the full, the intention of Christianity, the, the intention that doesn't actually get played out these days. Well, I've heard that uh, say I've before. Uh, it's, it's a good idea. When are they going to put it into practice? Uh -huh. you know? it's, it's so <laughs> so I actually like that, and I would argue. And then 20 years after that. You know, and, and most recently, I've had exactly the same arguments with people who are almost like fashionable atheists you yeah. know, and and uh, empirical scientific type people. Oh, so they think. Not not so not so much new age. More more people that um, 
the people who subscribe to the I fucking love science page, mm -hmm. you know, as if like, well, what's not science? You know, <laughs> well, that's, see, that's, you know, so I've had, but I had the same arguments with them because I, I saw the same obstinacy and I saw the same exactly. kind of same with me. Um, so and 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 my philosophical position is was was really understood. Yeah, well, that, you, you seem very similar to me, and I experienced that myself through like speaking to creationists, evolutionists, these types of people. You know, I call them new age atheists. Um, uh, there's certainly new waves of them in the last. Evan Evangelists, I was calling them. <laughs> Aye, that's a good, good, yeah. good term for it. But they don't even recognise there's a separation between natural science and formal science. Uh -huh. Formal science, you know, mathematics is a formal science. It's a language. Yeah, it's a yeah. language that's it's an apparatus that's been that we created. Created to, to, to explain ideas. and you know and show you know direct reality, actual substance. Yeah. Now when we get into the realms of big bangs and ab abiogenesis, life from. Uh, you know, non-living matter, no. all these things, these things can never be recreated or shown. So for me, it's no scientific, because if you make a claim to me about reality, you should be able to recreate it, you should be able to show it. Uh -huh. Would you agree with that? If you make a claim about reality, you should be able to back it up. Aye. Well, I agree with that in the sense that if any, you should back up any claim you make. Exactly. Particularly in science, I mean, if you say, um, oh, there's God, um, obviously, you can't back that up. But then again, you don't need to, because yeah. it's faith. Yeah. And faith doesn't require backup. Yeah. It's like, well, I have faith. So if it is in the scientific realm, then you should back it up. But the thing is, there's a difference between somebody making a claim about someone and someone or positing something. a theory about something. Yeah. yeah, a hypothesis or a theory. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. But so you know, positing you, a theory isn't he, isn't he make, making a claim of reality. Yeah. Yeah, but you would still need to pursue that in order to falsify or verify. So going back to my water thing, you know, for me, I don't need to have faith that I know that liquid has a definite physical um, properties to it. It behaves uh -huh. and it obeys certain physical laws. We have used it to construct for thousands of years. Aye. We depend on it every single day. So if I was to say to you, you know, understanding that one fundamental fact of reality, for me, that totally debunks the claim that we live on a spinning ball flying about the vacuum of space. I, I don't think it does completely debunk it. Well, if, I don't. I don't really. Th I don't really think it does. If, if I was to say you then, could you give me one practical example of a body of water displaying convexity? Do you think you could? Well, show I can't. That? I can't give you that. Yeah. Because I'm a, an artist who works part time in a cafe. Yeah. And so I. I, I <laughs> but on you, be basing things on your everyday experience of reality. That's what I'm more interested in. Oh right. I see. Well, my everyday experience of reality will, will differ from somebody else's yeah. reality window. I mean, we can look at three different maps: a weather map, a physical map, and a political map, and we're looking at exactly the same thing. Yeah. But it's completely different. But well, you've got your subjective and, take on these these things. Uh -huh, which is, and which that's is true. and 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 you can't. It's difficult to separate that from your objective take, yeah. because everything means something different to you. Yeah. You know, and what people say is that a lot of people say, you know, yeah, um, opinion doesn't matter. You know, don't bring don't bring opinion to a fact fight. But opinion it can be translated as everyday experience. You know, and um, the the uh, the study of water is something that I haven't looked into. So yeah. some of your questions I can't answer. Yeah. So I can only say based. Uh, I can only say based on my own uh, experience. I can't tell. I can't tell you what I haven't seen. Yeah. I so, can tell you what I've seen, but I can't tell you what I haven't seen. I haven't, so, so, so I haven't seen green elephants either. Well, near of and if somebody claims to me that green elephants are true, I need to see the green elephant yeah. before I before I believe it. Uh, so yeah, based yeah. on you know, going back to you saying you know your, your philosophical, for me uh -huh. I, I was the same. But there would be a huge difference if I'm trying to reason or philosophise from a point of view of, of assuming or believing that I live on a globe flying through the vacuum of space that was created by a big bang or a big expansion. <laughs> you know, my, my philosophy is then you know based on that assumption, uh -huh. right? Because I'm trying to reason from that assumption. Uh -huh. If that's no true, your philosophy would change, would it not? If I was to say to you, the Earth is stationary, the Earth uh -huh. is level. And that as a created environment, would uh -huh. your philosophy then and your mind then start to think it would, differently? Well, yeah, yeah, because it would, because it would. Well, what it would say is, you would put that to me. That's a thought experiment, yeah. and you would put that to me, and I would say, well, okay, well, what would be the consequences of that? How would it work? Yeah. What does that mean for a thousand-year global conspiracy to make us believe this certain so they say, thing? So they say a thousand you know, years. Well, uh, so what? I mean, a thousand years of. Uh, since Copernicus started to measure the planets and stuff like that. So is that, um, 
then I would have then I would have to take on the fact that there's been thousands of years, uh, generation upon generation, from people that are long dead to make us believe this. Yep. So that so the if, if, so you if it's been going on for thousands of years, but again uh -huh. we come to conjecture and hearsay because we're taking things from written books. But maybe a man in high castle type stuff like we're, we're, like it's only been the past thirty years that someone has created all this history. Or like you know last hundred years, you know since NASA was created since. Uh -huh. It's that time. Well, I couldn't, was... I couldn't argue, I couldn't realistically argue with that because I was born in 1970. Yeah. So I, I'd have to believe that my grandfather lied to me. My, well, you I, know. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say, see, this is a thing. Know, or he was taken in, or she I didn't, I didn't lie to my kids. See, this is a thing uh -huh. that people think. You know, everybody would have to be lying. What if people are just misled? If you're born into, you know. Well, I've been, I have been misled in that um, I thought that my great grandfather was called Carson Nielsen from uh, Christensand. My brother did the family tree, and it turns out we're all through Ireland and back up to Norway, like you know, seven, eight hundred years ago. Yeah. So somebody in my family made up a story of, about this beautiful story about Carson Nielsen coming from Christensand and meeting an Irish girl in Glasgow, changing his name to Charles Nelson because of the First World War and to sound more British, and 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 it was all bullshit. Yeah. So there was a. a I, a complete family story that we all believed. So there is stuff that you could all believe. Yeah, and and if, if you, you know you're getting born into you know say this culture, you go to the education, the, the universities, they tell you what to teach. Uh -huh. You know you have to pass through their grades. So people, mm. you know, people are no well in their line. You wouldn't say that. People can be misled. Somebody has be, to be. Yeah. Well, this is a. Point. Are you talking about maybe it's going to be? It's been going on so long that it's it's wildfire and we just. Well, it's never went away. This whole question of what the shape of the earth is has never really gone away. You know, it's always. But you know, been there. like. It, but, see, but see when it comes to that, and I, I'll conclude here if that's alright because I need to get back in. But um, uh, when when they asked empirically whether or not God existed, when the ancient Greeks were all discussing the, whether or not God existed, um, it was uh, um, Ep no, 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 Pericles, um, uh, Epicurus, Epicurus yeah. said um, a far more important things to be concerned about than whether or not God exists. Yeah. So. I find from my philosophical position, from my and from the way my life is formed, I have to say to you that I've got far more things to be concerned about than whether or not the earth is flat or round. Yeah. So I think there's a, because see in the end it really wouldn't matter to me whether it was flat or round. Right. Because we're all still doing the same thing and I, I've still got the same struggles and same problems, same desires, yeah. same fears. Yeah. And same responsibilities to my children, yep. same responsibilities to my community. Mm -hmm. So whether or not the earth is round or flat... Uh, but in a psychological we, sense, if we don't have grounding, proper grounding, and we're, we're basing our I'm, reasoning on a false premise... I'm not that, kidding you. I am not kidding you when I say it probably wouldn't make any difference to me if yep. the news came out tomorrow that the world was flat, well, scientifically proven. There's many people who, who think I, the same. I wouldn't care. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I'm still going to believe because I have to believe, I have to defer yeah. to science the same way as a person has to defer to a higher being. So it's a belief system. So uh, I think, yeah, but I think I think that science is is uh, we have to agree. You can't you can't actually so prove have, anything. Yeah, we have to base things on objective reality. We, in order yeah, to we, agree. Ha we have to agree, right? Yeah. That some that something is. That's what peer review is all about. Prove, disprove. We have to agree on what reality is. Yeah. And I'm happy to agree that the earth is round. But if we found out tomorrow it was flat, it really wouldn't make much difference to my life. Do you think you'll ever, would you think the base in this conversation you'll maybe contemplate it a wee bit or have a look at it? I, 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 I probably wouldn't, but no. but I'll tell you this, as as a as a child of philosophy, I'll probably think about a lot of other things because of this conversation. Excellent. So even though you've raised a conversation about that particular subject, I'll probably go away and think about indirect things, not not particularly the water thing or the flat earth thing, but there's probably a lot of things that I'll think about that as a result of this conversation. Excellent. Which is which is why well, I think philosophy is a good other, way to one go. Quick other thing, do you believe they went to the moon in the sixties? Do I believe it? Um Yeah I see I'm, yeah, I'm in a position where I want to come up with a different answer. Yeah. Because you've created this, this the reality of this conversation. Yeah. You've created an apparatus for this conversation. <laughs> so I'm trying to answer within that apparatus. Yeah. Uh, but I would say, yes, I believe it. Mm. But if you told me tomorrow it was a hoax, and you, there was proof, I would believe that too. So and great. again, it wouldn't really make much <laughs> difference to well, my life. I, I, love your <laughs> I love your honesty, man, and that's all I was looking for. I really appreciate your honesty, and that's it. Um, you know, some people, it doesn't matter to them. You know, Mid Middle-aged philosophy has taught me to... to um, to, to 
He's up. Is it well, to look, no, to, just to look at things with a different perspective. Well, that's, that's my boss. I thought you were working today. <laughs> I was working, but I'm just trying to get some advertising for the Three Villages Pit Stop Cafe. <laughs> free advertising, free advertising. <laughs> for his 25,000 YouTube viewers. It's in Arica. Oh, I really appreciate the conversation. <laughs> Much respect for your honesty. Up. Thank you, hey, bud. Cheers. So, anybody who's out, the bikers, I'm sure many in Scotland will know it. Three villages pit stop and we're in Arica. So So hi guys, how you doing? My name's Dale. Hi, hi Dale. Patricia. Patricia. Nice to meet you. Will. Will, how are you yeah, doing? Will. All right. Um, what, what I do is um, I do street interviews and stuff and ask people questions about the world we live in and things like that. Yeah. If I was to say to you, government loves you, government always tells you the truth, government has your best interests at heart, what would you say to that? Oh, I'm not even Scottish, so I, oh, I prefer not to talk about politics. No, no, talk about well, politics. No politics, no religion. Excellent. <laughs> so, I'm not, um, you all love science. I love natural science. Do you, do you like science yourself? Uh, yeah. Have you ever heard the question of what shape the earth is? Are you aware of this ongoing discussion that's happening in regards to the shape of the earth? Shape of the earth? No. Do you... What, what, what's, what's the discussion? What's the discussion? Well, there's Think many people. There, there is many people who are debating and discussing whether the the claims and what they're telling us in regards to the Earth being a, a ball All right. in space. Um, and yeah. there's people questioning whether that's actually true. Have you ever considered it? Yes, and uh, it, it, it brings me great joy and amusement. I think it adds to the gaiety of the nation that we have window lickers, mouth breathers, and conspiracy theorists. <laughs> um, and uh, I'd just like to say the moon landings aren't true either. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 9 11 Jews, all Jews. Uh, oh, absolutely. And. Um, do you want to say anything about? Let's get into politics now. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's. Princess Nicola. Yeah. Should be the royal family of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Alex Salmon should be the first president of Scotland. I think it would be a marvellous thing if Scotland got independence. That's that's right. I think it would be great because it would instantly become a banana republic, <laughs> and um, that means in England the taxes. Our tax relief would probably be an extra 10p in the pound because the um, we wouldn't be paying for Scotland anymore. Oh. Yeah. So there's your politics. You answer that now. <laughs> so in regards to the the Earth not being a globe, uh -huh. if I asked you, if it's I could, it's not it's not a globe. So you, you, you agree then that there is a, a question to be answered? Uh, well, I, I think it's been answered in that it's, it's a slightly flattened sphere with a bulge at the equator because of the centrifugal force. So an ablate spheroid? The way, aye, something like that. A ablate spheroid. Uh -huh. And um, I, I, I would tend to go with the, um, the kind of less is more explanation. So, uh, have, you, have you ever experienced the Earth as a globe? Have you ever seen that with your own eyes? Uh, no, but I don't need to have full empirical proof to believe things. So if I was to pan around here right now mm -hmm. and we were to look at that right there, mm -hmm. water, mm -hmm. and if we go to natural science, fluid mechanics, yep. we understand that water doesn't have any shape, it doesn't have any form, it will take the shape of its container, the surface will always be horizontal and flat. Would you agree with that? You wouldn't? Good, go on. What would you say? It's, it's still difficult for me to interact uh, about these subjects in English. What, what language do you speak? Italian. Italian. Go on then. Seriously. <laughs> like, I guess about Italian. Okay, I go on. Please, once again the question so I can go on in Italian because it, it was... Your accent is really hard for me, so... Well, yeah, I'll, I'll try and clean up my speech a wee bit. Um, you know, when I look into science uh -huh. and I go to fluid mechanics, okay. you know, I established that the most accurate measuring tool that I could find in order to find out, you know, the shape of the earth okay. was water. Because I know that water, you know, we've used it for leveling and construction for, you know, mm -hmm. millennia. 
um, and it has def definite physical properties, it has a definite physical behaviour to it. Now that behaviour is that water will take the shape of a container, like a cup, okay. a bowl, a yeah. sink, a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. um, the surface will always be horizontal. It doesn't have the ability to support itself, to display shapes upon its surface. Do you understand? Yeah. So, would you agree with that, what I've just described there? Yeah, now I do agree. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I understand. So, that one fact alone, if they say the Earth is covered 80% in water, okay. and we know how water behaves, okay. how then could we be living on a ball? Whoa, whoa, whoa. How, how can we be living on a ball? That's a good question. When you look out to the horizon, yeah. you know the horizon? What shape do you see? What shape do I see? What shape? What shape what is shape? The, horizon, the horizon? It's flat because we are not... Oh, it's kind of complicated. We are not looking uh, to a... Uh, like, it's just a part of the horizon, of course. So yeah. it's impossible to see the... Yeah. The, the round, the, curve, the bend. The curve. There's many people who are looking for the curve. It's, the, it's terrible. <laughs> so do, do you believe that what they show you on the TV in regards to the Earth being a globe, do you actually believe that? Yeah, be I true? do believe it. You're, can I ask you why you believe it? <clears throat> because if the, the, the ground was flat, <laughs> at a certain point we should go like over falling the edge. down over the edge. Like, you know. but why, why would you think there would have to be an edge? Because it should finish at some point, don't you think so? Because we, we arrived, because from one point you can go and do the to arrive to the other part. Yes, so it must, it must be round. Yeah, you know? but if we if we go round and you know like a circle like that, that would be circumnavigation. No, it would it wouldn't be circumnavigation. It would be navigation from a point to the other. Well, if I go around you like this. Yeah, this is circumnavigation. Yeah. I would call that circumnavigation. Yeah. Yeah, but we have never seen circumnavigation from north all the way down to south, right up and back to north again. I never yeah. asked myself this kind of question. I know that it's I know that it's difficult the the um, accent and the language. But have you ever considered that you know what they, they tell you that it might not be true? This one I, I really think is true. Why why shouldn't we? Like all the physical demonstration that they they made to prove it are truth now. So I, it's one of the theory I wouldn't discuss. I just think you just take it for granted. You believe no, it. I don't take it for granted. I, and I, I'm not able to explain it now, but I understood it. Like there are physical principles that explains why the, <coughs> the globe is round. It's, <coughs> it's because that um, the current explanations that we accept uh, ex best explain how we see the world. So we don't need to introduce, the more information we get the less magic there is in the world. Because once was, become, was once magic, now it becomes uh, known through empirical data, which is data that you can see yeah, and measure and feel. Um, so if you like, these notions from other people, uh, they're, they're con in English it would be called a conceit, and I think it's similar in French, I don't know any Italian, but it's a conceit, which means that it's, it's a self-indulgence to play a game. It's like Descartes, cogito ergo sum, you know, uh, I think therefore I am, yeah. Yeah. how do I know I exist, okay. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That that was quite, if, if you like, back then it was a, a little major issue because people were tormented about where did it come from and yeah. did God, the, the, someone had to make us, there had to be a God figure because we didn't know enough. Uh, even now with science, oh, sorry, I do, I do believe that uh, people say science and God yeah. uh, are incompatible. But no, because you'll always come back to uh, well, what kicked it all off. Exactly. And that gives you, uh, and I, I think this is a good thing, that there's still enough space left in this world of hard knowledge uh, to have a little bit of mysticism or magic or God. By the way, for the record, I am an atheist. Yeah. Uh, and if you like, yeah, I think 
we can explain things. And, you have, know, you ever, have you ever seen life coming from non-living matter? Have you ever no, seen life um, jumping no. into existence from nowhere? No, because the current, the current, um, if you like, models which seem plausible to me um, don't suppose that. Yeah. So if, if I went to science and I was to describe what you know, my understanding of science is based on empirical yeah, facts, yeah, it has so repeatable, sub it's repeatable observation, repeatable observations. Uh -huh. So when we get back again to you know asking about the questions, if somebody claims to me the Earth is a round ball uh -huh. in a vacuum flying endlessly through space, uh -huh. you know straight away you know as I said before about the, the liquid aspect, uh -huh. I look at liquid and fluid mechanics and uh -huh. understand how that behaves. Uh -huh. now, that one observation for me contradicts wholly that we we cannot be living on the exterior of a sphere. Why is that? Because water does not conform to the exterior of objects. Water does not conform to the one the one fact that you you're missing is that you've got a you've got a factor in centrifugal force, gravity, or gravitational force as well. Um, well gravity, you know, could could, could uh, you define it and then you know offer a practical example of gravity? It's well I, I couldn't actually and sort of Newton's a better man than me and <laughs> well, I wouldn't be able so, to So you have to prostatize yourself to, you know, a hierarchy like a priesthood and believe and what they offered you, would you know? Uh, if, if I bring it back yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, me new, to me new as uh -huh. individuals, as just two men speaking to each other, uh -huh. and I asked you, you know, if I asked you, could you prove to me that the Earth was a globe, what, what would you what would you come up with in, in order to I wouldn't, it's not something I'd be bothered wasting my time arguing over, it's no. just a, a sort of... As well, I science say, isn't uh, an argument, uh, it's a discussion, it's... Yeah, but I mean, it's not sort of, I suppose it doesn't... It doesn't interest me enough to have that discussion, I think. There's more interesting things, there's more, there's more uh, intriguing aspects to talk about yeah. than something that's so fundamental. And if a person has difficult, difficulty with relating to the socialised reality that's being created with all its rules and whys and wherefores, it's, it's not really, I'm not on that wavelength and my life's too short to be wasting time. Totally appreciate that. Talking about that. I mean, it's like, it's like the sort of, uh, the old, uh, how, many, guys. Uh, <laughs> how many angels can dance in the head of a pin roll, St. Augustine. Lovely chat in a castle in the 12th century, but today it's not really relevant to me. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you think it would be important if we're trying to rationalise and uh, and come up with a reason for existence and who we are and why we're here. If, if, the, if we... Perpetuation of our DNA. Well... <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Meaning of life. And what was that? A wise man once said to me, if you're, if you're worried about the meaning of life, uh, what you want to do is go without food. If you're still wondering about the meaning of life, what you want to do is give, a, give up your shelter. And if you're still wondering about the meaning of life, sort of give away all your clothes, then you'll start wondering about the meaning of life. Yeah. <laughs> well, interesting philosophy. Um, but, you know, I appreciate you speaking to pragmatic. me. Pragmatic. It's a pragmatic yeah, approach. Well, that's yeah, so I don't, I'm afraid I don't have a very romantic view of existence. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty much the <laughs> no, same. No, 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 I think, I think, no. I think, I think we need dreamers. Well, and we need, we, need, we need the off-centre yeah. approaches to life, because obviously that's, that's testing, isn't it? I mean, yeah. sort of, I, I'm standing here sort of saying, oh, well, this is what I believe. But you always need uh, a balancing point of view. I think the only thing that, that worries me is kind of um, asymmetrics in that uh, these days, certainly sort of, I don't know, you'll see that in the media, you'll see, you'll see things like... Um, Views are always treated equally, no matter how barmy one of them might be. Now, so this this well, like asymmetry that. is a bit is a bit is about worrying because there isn't a parity going on at all. But I would disagree a wee bit there. No, because, no, it's fine because uh -huh. you know what I've witnessed in my you know three years involved with this subject is that mm -hmm. science has became very dogmatic, um, and you're met with serious. Can be humorless. I agree well, with you're, that. you're met with serious opposition yes. when you try to you know question the validity of claims like we live in a vacuum on a globe flying through infinite space uh -huh. um, and for me you know science should never be closed it should never be dogmatic it should always be welcome and open to question would, would you agree with that um, to an extent as I say I'm getting back to the say symmetrical approach in that everything's given sort of um, uh, parity so you'll have a person the conspiracy theorists come up with something really wacky about some 
But the, the Aston Villa Globe. No, no, yeah, the, 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 that, the, that she always is the same. That's kind of a bit, well, not really true. But, um, you know, you, you get an interpretation of some major catastrophe or something really horrible out of them. And you, you always get a conspiracy theorist. Because they come out with something so atypical, they get kind of airspace. So you get a person who's well informed about whatever the event is and they will be treated just the same as the person who knows nothing yeah. but comes up with something totally wacky yeah. and off the wall because well that sort of sells things I yeah. mean you didn't like this well, well. I'm sure well I'm sure you'll get plenty of people well all, all spectrums of thought and um, some will be more entertaining than others yeah. I imagine the more practical commonsensical people won't won't be as interesting yeah. as shall we say the so guys that say, come out with you, we're you, not you, living in a globe well would you say that you base your life you trust your common sense you trust your senses um i trust my senses in as far as i'm well you go here the day you dressed yourself you go here on the bike you rolled that cigarette, you're managing uh, to... Not nearly, smoking, nearly right. managing to light right. it. It's got spent more on gas than having tobacco. <laughs> so for me, I would say our senses can be trusted. There is an objective reality here. Um, something that we can... Ah, no, that's interesting. Because I'll actually, I think, take your side in this. There's a measurable reality, yep. but unfortunately, if you want to get into all the wacky stuff, uh, we, meet, we moderate our measurement, our empirical data, with our senses, our sensory yeah. perceptions, yeah. which are always subjective, because we we're filtering them back into our brain. Which is why we share them with which each other, though. Which is scary, actually, now that you've brought it up. Well, there is, there is an object, you know, if I was to, like, you know, pick up that slab and drop it on your head, you know... I'd, I'd feel it. You would feel it, and you would probably die, you would crush your skull. Thank you. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, to know. So, so there is a separation. For me, there is an objective mm -hmm. truth, there is an objective reality here. Um, and for me, that's what the core of science is. It's how do we establish mm. what the objective ah, reality but actually is. that's causality is. you're talking about. Well, uh, that's the repeatability. So if you sort of event B can only happen in the presence of event A, event B being the skull is crushed, and event A is that the rock was dropped on that skull. Yeah. So you're looking at the causal chains there, and I think that's what science is more about. Again, it's this repeatability and testing, so that things will happen in a certain sequence. But I take entirely your point that I suppose the realms of science that we look into wilder side for me anyway would be all this quantum physics and sort of well, all this stuff and, oh, I, that, that, same that, as gravity in my head Gra gravity. Well, exactly oh. once you start poking into gravity it's all sort of kind of a wee washy bit. washy I, yeah. you get yeah. to a point where it sort of kind of peters out yeah. dare I say evolution as well but well, these are the things I'm I can't even tell that. To, these well, are the things I buy into, though. Yeah, well, evolution another, is another part of this dramatic part of science. For me. It's not recreatable, it's not observable you're in not, any way, shape, or form. You're a creationist, then? No. Nope. You're not religious nope. in any way, shape, direct, or form? Direct realist. Direct? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I base things on my direct experience and what uh -huh. I can experience and test and measure for myself. And there is absolutely zero proof, there is zero measurable proof that the Earth is actually a sphere. The only thing that's out there is the institutions like NASA and these other space agencies who show us on a TV screen uh -huh. that that's what the Earth is. Would it surprise you if I said that, you know, every one of these images we see are composite images, they're not actual photographs? Composite? Uh, they're digitised. So they say they take sure. slices and then yeah, they, yeah. they blend uh, them together and then they fill well, in the I'm gaps. I'm comfortable with that because that's what that's doing at the moment. Yeah. So I'm comfortable with that technology. Yeah. Yeah. So and the original, the original uh, photographs of they were they were stills. They were they, they were the old you know sort of chemical reaction stuff. But if I, if I was to come to you with photographs and I say, look here, I've got uh, pictures of Nessie. Yeah. Or I've got pictures Lovely. of me with Superman. Would Lovely. you take it as scientific? No, but I would take it and smile a lot and go, you're good with Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the same is then true. You know, for me, we have to, especially in today's day and age of, uh, you know, uh, manipulation through video uh, and images, I would have to remove that from the equation. And uh, let's get back to measurement, actual tangible stuff, rather than depending on an image from an institution or a photograph from uh, an institution. Because for me, you're getting a wee bit religious there. And I'd, I'm, you know, I'm totally opposed to religion. I think belief should be eradicated and people should get back to direct realism. Where, where do you get your dreams from then? Well, you know, dreams are subjective, it's a totally different thing. From. 
you know, these things are great, you know, but what I'm interested in is this this space that we share right now that I call objective reality, uh -huh. you know, and how we go about establishing what that actually is. Mm -hmm. um, and as I say, you know, for me, I have found absolutely zero proof that the Earth is actually a globe. Right, and has that how does that affect your life? Well, it affects my life, you know, I'm a philosopher, I'm a, a contemplator, I'm a, a deep thinker. So if I'm, you know, I've, for 37 years of my life, I believed, assumed, totally true, that I lived in a globe, flying in space, blah, blah, blah. So for me to then try and rationalise and reason from that assumption, you know, when you, when I realise that, well, if I take that assumption, that foundation uh -huh. away, and it may be something else, my reasoning, my, ration, my rationality, my philosophy, uh -huh. it changes, I start to entertain different possibilities. You know, if I believe I'm on a, a limited space, a small globe flying through the infinite vacuum of space, my reason is limited. But you're not in a limited space, you're this an infinite space at the moment. Wait, so space is infinite? Yeah. Well, you know, according, again, to the, according, according, well, according to the here, here's the thing. cosmologist, so I mean, that's all speculation, if, I agree if, with you. If I go back to science again, uh -huh. you know, and somebody claims to me, oh, you can have a negative pressure system, i.e. a vacuum, uh -huh. and a positive pressure system, the atmosphere that we're experiencing right now, uh -huh. and those two can exist side by side without a solid separation. When I go to actual practical everyday science, yeah. we need a solid barrier between two opposing pressure systems in order for them to exist or they will equilibrate. But you have these institutions telling us that that's the that, reality that, up there. Yes, but I think I think the well, okay, not wanting to get into the whole debate about it, but no. I think you, you, you you've got to factor in other factors apart from just negative and positive pressures because you'll have mitigation such as the effects of gravity, well, you'll have the effects of movement, kinetic energy, and all that. Yeah. Not at all. They're not postulates. Uh, they're all part of the uh, the, the mechanics. Well, you know, and that that's Newtonian Newtonian universe. That was that was done five hundred years you, ago. Would, see if I asked you why a helium balloon balloon rises. Uh -huh. What would your answer it's be? It's lighter than air. Right. So, so uh, where's gravity? Would uh -huh. you call a helium balloon an anti gravity device? No, not at all. Because so, that's confusing. What helium? How helium behaves with gravity as a fundamental category area or error in that helium. Is a lighter than air gas. Yeah. Uh, if you like, air in this instance is the parity. Um, so where you have air, you have equilibrium in terms of balance and movement. Where you have gases that are heavier than air, such as carbon monoxide, for example, that'll tend to be acted upon more by, say, gravitational forces than air. If you have helium, which is a lighter than air gas, that will have that will be less affected by gravitational force of any mass. So, if you like, um, the one thing I, I mean, I, God, I don't want to get debating about it because I don't know enough. No, about no, it's it. not. But, it's not uh, a debate. It's, you see, I, this is a, this but, is a problem. Uh, yeah. you, you know, debates for me are when, uh -huh. are when people are putting ideas to each other. Again, uh -huh. objective science, real uh -huh. reality. But, but certainly, it, it be discussed. Cer certainly, things like uh, vacuum and space and all that carry on. And why doesn't why doesn't our atmosphere get sucked sucked into space or whatever? In terms of of, of the equilibrium, is, is gravitational forces again that would co that would pull the mixture of gases. And one of the things I've always marvelled that is you see looking at life on earth and all that carry on it seems that certainly for this particular life form or that we have here you, you have a, a certain very very narrow window of necessary heat combination of gases and elements etc 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 so that's why we don't have life on Mars and we don't have life on Venus which is the, the planets on either side Do you believe side that they are actually terra firma? Mars, Venus, these, yeah. these, why do you believe that? Yeah, because it's plausible. Plausible? It's certainly in my, in my world view it's plausible, yeah. yeah. Plausible Would you say there. then it's a belief system you have? Of course. Yeah, and is it based on what you were taught and educated in through your youth and your education? Yeah, my, I would say it's my previous predisposition. Yeah. To, would you, to, ever, to would you ever consider question the validity of any of these things? No, because I've questioned the validity more of, say, political systems or physical systems. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that would concern me more. Yeah. Well, each to their own, you know, yeah, this is yeah. my endeavour, this is my journey, you uh, know. No, I, 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 I so. wish you all the very best. Nicely. And I uh, go and plug your video thing, because I need to, I, I want to look at it. I'll be looking at ah, it. Ah, of course I will do. Yeah, my my, my um, YouTube channel is called Beyond the Imaginary Curve. YouTube channel Beyond the Imaginary, Imaginary Curve. Curve. Uh -huh. 
what I do there, I do many street interviews. Uh -huh. um, I go live on a Saturday night. Uh -huh. We invite anybody who thinks that they could come and prove to us that the Earth is actually a sphere uh -huh. and a vacuum. And, and what's your what, what, what's your video feed or your your uh, YouTube channel called? Beyond the Imaginary Oh, oh that Club. is it. That is it. Well, Beyond that's the great. Imaginary I will Club. look forward to seeing you. The reason that. it's called that is because there is <laughs> absolutely zero beyond. curvature. <laughs> 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 well, we experience life I'll as flat. I'll see you in space. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Very now. <laughs> Appreciate your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Good. Loch Lomond. Loads of curvature. A uh, big hump right there in the water, I see that. Found the curve. What about you, sir? Have you heard of the flat earth? <laughs> what shape's the earth, my man? Get more sense out of you than half the people out of there. <laughs> we got two lovely gents here that are having a convo with me. <laughs> what is your name, sir? Phil Wicks. Phil. Adrian Bingham. Adrian, I'm going to come round here, so I'm not spinning. So just in passing there, I had says, you know, have you ever noticed how flat the earth seems to be? What do you think about that? Yeah. It's not flat with the hills over there, though, is it? No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. See, pe people have got this common misconception that flat means like a, yeah. like a table or yeah. a... You know, obviously we've got high points and low points, but we seem to be judging that by sea level. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a tricky one. Aye. If you look out in certain places, you can actually see a bit of curve on the horizon on a sunny day. Or do you think, think you're seeing curve? I think I, it's probably a lot of that, yeah. Aye. Probably because we know the Earth to be round. Or do you think, or do you believe it to be round? Someone's done some bloody good Photoshop and pictures from space if it didn't break. Well, this is a thing. Do you, do you know that there's no actual photographs? There's no actual photographs of the Earth from space. They're, they're composite images. Do you know yeah, that? Get out. Honestly? Honestly? Well, there was this program with James May when he went up as far in the plane, as high as you could go yeah. physically with the plane. Yeah. And then you saw the pictures from him there. It's actually showing you, you know, the... the, the, the uh, do, you, do, you know what a, do you know what a fish eye lens is? Yeah. You know what a fish eye lens is? Yeah. So you, we've got many people who are sending up like balloons and high altitude things. Um, you know, there's a balloon, certain balloon footage I've seen that goes to 121,000 feet. And it's not got a GoPro fish eye lens in it. And the horizon is still flat. So there's, there's like an anomaly, there, there seems to be a, a bit of contradiction with these images that people are getting from, from high altitude. I, I, would, I would say that when James May was in, when he was up there, that was, you know, I, he, he, there's a type of guy who I would think would be, sort of want to show anything different in a different light and everything, yeah. like, you know, so he was up there, you know, he said, I, I, you know, the pictures he you had there was very much showing well, yeah. What if I said there was a, a, an accurate tool that would show us beyond any shadow of a doubt that we don't live on a globe? Would you, would you willing to listen to it? An accurate measuring tool? There's an accurate measuring tool yeah. called what? Water. Water, yes. So we know in physics that water's not got the ability to hold itself and conform to the exterior of shapes. You know, if I explained that, uh, that bodies of water on Earth and in physics and science, They'll take the shape of their container. The surface will always be flat, horizontal. Do you agree with that? Like these two pints you're having right now? Yeah, yeah. We know they're contained. Yeah. Yeah. And the surface is flat. If I was to dip a sphere into that, do you think you would see the silhouette of the sphere on top of the water? Or the liquid? It would sit down so far, wouldn't it? It depends on which it's made, 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 made of. Yeah, because you've got a sphere that's made of air, it's not going to sink, is it? Just well, up the top. If, it was, if it was dense enough to sink, it would do, yes. you wouldn't see the, the silhouette of the sphere on top of the water, would you? No. no. Yeah. So do you not think that kind of contradicts the idea that we live on a globe? Well, in the matter of scale, 
Well, at what scale do you think the physics would change where water then has, you know, the ability to bind together and hump up? Well, I think it's gravity, isn't it? I guess the gravitational pull's got to be there as well. Surely that's that's what's uh, well, that's, a, that's, you know, that's pulling us all down, isn't it? It's a theory, isn't it? I mean, gravity's a, a theory. It's never been actually proven. The only way you need gravity is if you're trying to tell people that they're on a sphere and there's people upside down on the other side of the, well, go, the yeah, ball. Yeah, but you look at um, you know, the guys that create the, the vacuum, like the guys, the astronauts and everything. They can't carry that, you know, when there's no gravity, they're floating. Yeah. You know, I, I can't jump up in the air, something pulls me back down again. It's my, my weight being pulled back down the ground see, again. See, regardless of whether I, you know, I say they're faking that or not, but, you know, people say this quite often about things, how they behave in a vacuum, but the, the fact of the matter is, is we don't live in a vacuum. <coughs> we, we live in a pressurised, gaseous environment. Do, yeah. So, you know, people equate, you know, oh, look how it behaves in a vacuum. And I always go back to natural science and I say, no, we live here. You know, so how does liquids behave here, here on Earth? You know, um, I mean, you look at that. I mean, it's pretty. Um, but also, I mean, you know, you get you look at your tides yeah. are dictated by the moon and gravity. You know, so it's you know, it's it's and the slop effect. Would it be, would it be true to say that, that that what you're saying is what we've been taught from childhood? I think. Yeah, oh, very much so. But you've never had any practical experience of I've any never of been, that? I've never, never, no, never actually tried to create a tide myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've flooded a few bathrooms <laughs> in the time looking over them. Well, well, I've, well, not, I've, not, uh, I've not, not actually physically quite tried to create a tide, if, you know. If the moon's a quarter the size of the Earth and the moon's got the ability to pull our oceans, do you not think the Earth would pull the moon right into it? Possibly it could do. One day it might do. <laughs> <laughs> But you, that you, you mean you've never seen the Earth as a sphere with your own eyes, have you? No, no. No, you've never seen it with your own eyes as a sphere. No. no. So do you think some of these, you know, secret institutions like NASA and the okay, space agencies? Why, why is the moon a sphere then? Well, when I look at the moon and I look at the sun, I see a flat, circular shape. I don't see a sphere. Oh, you can't because you haven't got you haven't got the ability to look at the sphere from where we are. It's yeah. still certainly a circle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's circular, but again, that would be a fallacy. You know, it's like saying, "Well, the, the pool balls are round, therefore the table's round." You know, we don't know. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever you ever heard of the the, the term flat Earth? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. We all we've all heard of it. Yeah. What do you think about that when you when you hear flat Earth? What's the image that comes to your mind? Oh, prehistoric, heathen, uneducated people. Yeah. Well, that's what they told us, wasn't it? That's what they told us. Yeah. What kind of image would you get, you know, if you were to picture it, you know, in your mind? What image comes to you? Oh, the same sort of people who believe in ghosts and God knows what, I mean, just... But the image of the Earth, you know, like, the idea, you know, a lot of people say, oh, where's the edge, where's where's the edge? Do you, do you think about, you know, things like that when they, you say flat Earth, you think, oh, it's got an edge and you're going to fall off the edge? And... Well, that's because we don't, do we? No. We don't. And if you look at flights to Canada, there are two ways you can fly to Canada from the UK. You can fly due east, or you can fly due north and over the top. That only works if you've got a circular Earth. Well, if that was the case, you know, I could go left and right, you know, in every other direction. I mean, maps and compasses work flat and parallel. You'd have to be on a true... Um, Seeking back to what you said there about the flight, you know that they say the Earth spins at 1,000 miles per hour at the equator? You know that? So if I was to fly east, you know, depending on what way the spin's going, and I was to fly, fly them west back again, the time's the same. If, if there was an Earth rotating under me at 1,000 miles an hour, say I was at the equator, if I was to fly against that spin, surely I would get there in double time. Well, yeah, you would think so. But then they tell us that, oh, the, the air's like a big block of cheese and it moves with the earth at the same rate. Do you I guess, well, I guess, yeah, okay, well, yeah, there, is, there, is, there is pressure in the rain, you know, you've got the, uh, the, the ozone, what are the ozone layer? You called it, called it Professor Bride Cox. <laughs> <laughs> when you wake up in the morning, you've travelled over half a million miles while you've been asleep. Yeah. 
So they say the Earth's rotating at a thousand miles an hour. The Earth's rotating, it's spinning around the Sun. The at 65,000 miles an hour. The Sun's spinning around the centre of the galaxy. The Milky Way is spinning around God knows what. That, that, that liquid there looks absolutely still and motionless to me. It's because I haven't had a sip of it. <laughs> <laughs> it, will, it will not remain in that state for long. I mean, have you ever felt the motion of the Earth? you ever experienced it moving? I've felt gravity a few times when I've fallen over after too many of these. So, uh, yeah, you know. Well, see, uh, you know, I always bring this up to people, you know, a helium, helium balloon. Yeah. Would you call that an anti-gravity device? It's lighter than air, which is all that's important. Helium is lighter than air. Exactly. It's perfect. So it's less simple. dense. It's like one of the things you, you we were taught at school when I was a kid, of course it's sort of counterintuitive, is that cream is lighter than milk. Mm -hmm. yep. And ice is lighter than water. Hence why cream floats and why ice floats. Yeah, because the air is trapped. Counterintuitive. They, it's counterintuitive. It's because the air's trapped within the density of the the substance. Well, also partly because water reaches its densest at four degrees. Not, it doesn't continue to get denser as it continues to drop below that. It's what keeps fish alive, for example. Because unlike when you heat water, the, you, get the, you get the thermodynamic rotations and it all heats up. That works when you're cooling water until you hit four degrees and then it doesn't. Because the water at four degrees is now as dense as water could get. So as it cools, the cool water remains on top. Do you think there's a possibility that the government's all lying to us? I think I would be astonished if they weren't lying to us. <laughs> well, this is the thing. But it's where, where do we draw the line? I mean, I ask people this and they know that the governments are corrupt and they tell lies. And yet when it comes to this question about would they lie about where we actually are existing right now, people seem to, you know... But they reckon it wouldn't be just our government, though, would it? No. Because it would be, yeah, every government in the, in the world would have to sort of, you know, deny that saying that the earth's not ground, like, you know, so... And I, I don't see any other, other any other... They couldn't country, be in cahoots, uh, they couldn't other, be in cahoots with each uh, other. I, I, I doubt it. Could have you ever heard of the Antarctic Treaty? The Antarctic Treaty? It right. rings a bell somewhere. I think it's you know I'm not going to you know be exact on the figure, but you know we'll say 50 nations. Yeah. 50 nations work in unison, so and protecting the environment. In the, the middle, you, you know they appear to all be at war with each other, and you would think they were separated and divided up. Yet when it comes to this wee patch of ice, apparently, oh we're all friends and it's no problem. So I can see right there and then that you know there's you know these people could pull together um, and have us. You know, running around in circles, believing in nonsense, well, they perpetuate their control and their power. Do you think that's plausible? Do you think that's possible? I think it's unlikely. I wouldn't say it was impossible. I think it's unlikely. Yeah. 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 Oh God. I think North Korea would have broken ranks by now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, people say to me, everybody would have to be lying. Everybody would have to Absolutely. be anyone. Everybody would have to be lying. Well, I wasn't lying. I believed it for 37 years of my life. Yeah. I wouldn't say I was lying about it. I would say that I was born into my culture, I was born into an yeah. education system that yeah. told me that. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else seemed to believe it and I went with it. Yeah. So it's like a cult. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm educated enough to make my own decision on that. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, what I was taught at school, I, I still believe today that the earth is still round and everything is, is uh, until somebody can come and tell me it's different. Well, until somebody falls off the edge. <laughs> Why would uh, you see there's an edge? When's, 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 Why does there have exactly, to be an edge? It's a sphere. So there is no edge, is there? Well, it's a sphere, so there is no edge. You're just, you're just going to go on and on around, 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 around. There's no other possibility then to what it could be. It has to have an edge. Well, I'm sure that somebody's probably done a, you know, somehow, somewhere, it's gone around the world, you know, in some, some, Circumnavigated. Yeah. Ah, uh, you can circumnavigate. You know, you can circumnavigate yeah. north to south all the way right round. Yeah. It's never been done. Yeah. No. So just to round it up, I don't want to keep you too much. You've been great for giving me your time. If I was just to ask you outright, you know, I'll say, you know, I take it you believe you live on a globe. Yes. Could I ask you what your number one reason is for believing that? Education. Your education. My education, and uh, I'm an adult, ad it's how I, it's my, from my education, it's my understanding. Right. 
So that's it. So it's basically hearsay. It's what it's a belief system. Well, I've got no other way of asking unless I circumnavigate navigate the world myself well, and physically see it. Well, because I, it's unlikely to happen, isn't it? If I say to you that you know being a scientist, a natural scientist, is in, in everybody's ability, you don't need a PhD or somebody to say so. So if I point to your everyday experience of liquid and how it behaves, yeah. would you trust your common senses and your everyday experience to tell you that you know that's not possible, or would you still go with what you've been told? Uh, unless I'm being told differently or proven differently, once I've been proven differently, then I will change my mind. Is that no proof? I'm I'm proving it that no. water's not got the ability to behave like that. Uh, I I'm still not convinced. Right, over yourself. The horizon. The horizon for me is proof that we live on a sphere. And you think the horizon's curved? I know that the fact that I can only see 14, mile, 8 miles at sea level or something tells me that it's got to be curved because otherwise it's just a bloody step. But I know there isn't a step because I know France is just over there. <laughs> well, if I come down there, <laughs> if, if I come down here, if I come down here in different days depending on the conditions, I can see further than I can in other days. Other days I can see not as far. So it depends on atmospheric conditions, yep. on it how does. far we can see. It does, but you can never see France. But you can. You from can see France from Dover. Only from the cliff tops. You have to be above sea level to be able to see France from, from, from Dover. And it does depend on the atmospheric conditions because under the right conditions, light bends. Which means that you can see further than you would can do if in the prevailing conditions <coughs> life is travelling in truly straight lines so we know it doesn't so do you think would you ever consider it or look into it do you think there's a possibility that we've been deceived no I no. don't you think it's all kosher and well I think it's all kosher because there is certain evidence that I can see with my own eyes and it might not be conclusive but it's fairly persuasive all right how about yourself you think you'll ever look into it I no, not, not unless somebody actually comes and, you know, provides some evidence for me to actually want to look into it, yeah. What if I say to you that there's a huge movement of people happening from all walks of life, from academia to the common man, who are now actively involved in this and pursuing it, trying to get the scientific community set up and actually address well, you it? you have the opportunity now, because you have Facebook, you have lots of social media, where you can actually put your case out there. Yeah. And, you know, and in, in this country, nobody's going to stop you from doing something like that, putting it out there. Like, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, again, it's about you then putting that information out there yeah. for, to try and convince members of the public otherwise. Like, you know, and until, until I actually see some some hard proof, then I'll, uh, then I'll, make, then I'll, then I'll change my mind. But what what kind of proof would you need? You, you tell me, you show me that it's a flat earth. Yeah. You show me, you show me a picture of the earth, and how, how you think it is. Then. Well, I would say, uh, you know, I don't know that it's possible to get a full picture. Right. See, see, this is the thing. You know, we we see these images that they give us. Uh, sorry for keeping you here, but I'm, I'm just going to add this in. Okay. You know, I always refer to natural science. I'm what you would call a direct realist. I have to see substance. It has to be measurable, testable, and repeatable. So when somebody makes a claim to me that I live in an environment like a gaseous, pressurised environment, and next to that environment there is a vacuum. I go to science, I go to everyday practical experience, engineering, things that we apply every day, and two opposing pressure systems require solid separation. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. So how then would you believe that you live in a vacuum with no barrier next to a pressurised gassy environment? Well, yeah, okay, okay. But again, until you, you have to, you have to, you know. These worry I'll just, just seeing it. It. Seeing seeing it. it. I want to see yeah. it. I want right. to see aye. it. Aye. I want to see it. Well, that's what I try and encourage people. You know, you've got the, you've got your common sense faculties, your eyes, your senses. You can experience, like I'm saying, you're drinking a pint. You go up in the morning. You run a bath. You fill the kettle. You have a cup of coffee. Liquid always takes the shape of the container. Yeah. It never conforms to the exterior of any shape, yeah. regardless of scale. You know, um, so I, you know, and the, the, you know the other the other point being the stars don't really change; they're always fixed. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Yeah, I'm not an astronomer, yeah. but right. there are a number of times I've sat in my garden, especially this time of year, and stars aren't fixed. 
don't know. Polaris is not in the same place every night. Not. It is to practical, practical purposes. It isn't actually precisely the same. Well, see what you said earlier on. You understand the heliocentric model with the sun travelling. We spin round the sun. Yeah. You know, like so. If you're here, you know, at this side of the sun, and we're in summertime. Six months time, you're now going to be on the other side of the sun, looking into a different night sky. But you don't see a different night sky. You see the same you night sky. You don't see a different night sky, which is why. Since we're moving, the stars have to be moving too. Because otherwise, in winter we see the Southern Cross. That doesn't happen. Yeah. You want to see the Southern Cross, you've got to Australia, New Zealand, somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere anyway. Yeah. Aye. But, you know, again, you know, the sky, the stars, they, they don't really give anything measurable about the shape of the Earth that we're upon. Um, listen guys, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. I, hope that, I hope that he's looking at it and maybe something I've said triggered. Yeah. Something to get your curiosity. No, no, no. It's interesting. No, no. It's ah. very interesting. Excellent. Good. Good Thank ones. You. Cheers, Thank guys. Hey, did you get it? Oh, oh, oh. Did you get it? Is the world a ball? No, is it flat? Hey, it's flat. Yes. Yeah, did you get it? Who's that you've got? Who you got? Who you got? Easy, 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 easy,